In this video, I'm gonna go through all of the different assets that come with file organization for a design project. Hi, I'm Jenny Familiaricano. I'm a designer, educator, and creative coach, helping creatives just like you organize ideas so that you can communicate with more clarity. When it comes to file organization, when you're thinking about what you're creating for your work or multiple days in which you are working, you want it to be as easy as possible for you to jump in. And if you are someone who spends multiple days on especially gigantic files with long timelines, you don't want to have any sort of speed bumps, anything keeping you from getting work done. So make it as easy as possible and try saving all of these things for your file organization. These are the assets that you actually use to create your work. And this makes it easy for you to jump into your work in a database day-to-day -day basis. When you're working on things like motion projects, they can take multiple days. It also makes it easier for you to jump between multiple projects that happen to share the same timeline or you have to manage uh, at the same time. So making sure that all of your working assets are somewhere really accessible for you. So the assets that you've received from your client that we talked about in the first part, those assets should also be available for you on either your computer or on Dropbox or Google Drive, somewhere where you can actually have access to the files. What I have included in the beginning, the summary, those are just links so I can reference like what I've received, but you should also download them to your computer so that you can already get started. You have access to the colors, fonts, all of those are accessible on the computer that you are working on. So the file organization also includes all of the different working files that you might be using, whether it be Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects files, Premiere files, anything that you use to edit, you should also include in the same project folder um, and also keep track of the different versions that you are saving. God forbid this is inev inevitably going to happen, but the client's going to want to go back to round one or maybe we go through the whole shebang and we want to go back to the very first round happens a lot more frequently than many of us would like but it happens so in order to prevent that save some time so you don't have to lose any of the work that you've already created version control include the date that you save things have all of that in your file organization system as well. And the last thing that I want you to focus on in these file organization as well is the outgoing folder. So any of the renders or files that you are sending out for review for your team or just to yourself, that should be included in something like an outgoing folder. And what this can include are your renders that you're doing, any MP4s that are like video files where you're doing any animation tests of a sequence those are really prime for preparing for your portfolio so make sure you include these in the best light possible any graphic interchange format files also known as gifs um, that you might be exporting and sharing those can be highlighted as well and those can also be formatted in a way where you're already ready to plug them into dribble or instagram or your website so that you're not needing to do double work for yourself and you're already preparing for publishing that portfolio piece. Keeping all of your assets together in one place makes it easier for you in the future and you don't have to go looking that up when you come back to it, especially if you're balancing multiple projects at the same time. That is just one aspect of a design project that you can learn how to keep track of. Check out this video if you're interested in learning more about how I like to keep track of projects. And until then, I will see you in the next video.